Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 23 of my web design and programming tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a proper forgotten password script. So, I got some of the information in here already. You've already seen how to start sessions and how to include information from other files. In this case, this loads the database and a bunch of other security functions. Here's basic HTML. And down here at the bottom, you can see our form where the person's going to enter their user ID and their mother or their grandmother's maiden name and I have my max lengths set here and here's the information in regards to the CAPTCHA system okay and that's what you can see over here on the right side of the screen well now all we got to do is create the PHP code that is going to make this guy work and this is pretty much the last time I'm going to do a tutorial like this so you might cheer but people ask for this stuff and it is extremely important and that's why I'm covering it so here we're checking if the variable called submitted has a value and we're going to check for a valid user ID. Sorry, I don't comment in these things. It's just too much to type in. I normally comment a lot more than it seems like I comment. And we know this user ID is going to contain upper and lower case letters as well as numbers. And it's going to be between 8 to 20 characters in length. You should be really good at regular expressions by now. Dollar sign strip slashes. Oh, I got a request. Somebody asked me what exactly does strip slashes do? here for security reasons and basically what it does is if anybody puts a backslash in with a quote for example it'll simply turn that into a simple quote and if they have two backslashes it will turn it into one so that's basically what strip slashes does purely there for security reasons okay and then we're going to trim off any white space that they might have entered all right and if it does work we're going to assign this user id that they passed to us after we send it through our other function that is actually in this guy up here. And you can get that at newthinktank.com. It's free. Download it, do whatever you want with it. And I showed you in a previous tutorial exactly what was in there. Else, if it doesn't pass my regular expression test, I'm going to set u equal to false. And I'm going to echo to screen. Information entered was wrong, just to keep it nice and simple. And then exit out of there. And then what I want to do is check for a mother's maiden name. And this is going to be exactly the same, except for one thing, obviously. We're not going to use user ID here. We're going to use mother name, which you can see right here. And also, I'm going to change this to six. Actually, I should probably change it to three. I guess technically somebody could have a last name, two characters, but I'm leaving it that way. Mother name right there. And mother name. And that's all I need to enter there, except I'm not going to need this check right here. All right, so that makes sure, using regular expressions, that they're entering valid information in both the user ID as well as the mother's maiden name. And then I have my CAPTCHA code. Again, I'm just going to copy and paste this from previous. And here is all that information that I copied and pasted. It's identical to what we used in the past. So if it doesn't make any sense, take a look at the previous tutorials to this, specifically the one that talks about CAPTCHA. All right, so now we got the CAPTCHA system in there. Now we have to check if all those values passed all the tests that I gave to them. If and SQ is the value for secret question. And I should also go up here and change that. SQ and CAPTCHA check. And now I'm just going to create a query. Select secret question. And always define the secret question and make sure it's a good one. Don't allow them to create their own secret question. I found in most cases what people do is type in their last name or their user ID or something like that. Make sure you give them something that they can remember that is also difficult for other people to know. Always make sure you put those single quotes around the value there whenever you're issuing this to a query. Trigger error. And then we want to check that only one row was affected. And then we're going to get the values that were returned from the query and assign them to an array called row, right like that. Then we're going to check that the secret question that they entered is equal to whatever the value is in the zero index for row, because that's what this guy is right here. And then we have to get all the other information we need out of there because we're going to be sending them an email. So. We need to get the email address from the database that's stored there. We're going to create a new password for them. And we're using a multi-layered random number generator here. Actually, three random number generators. And then we're going to issue another query. So we'll call this query2. And update users set the value of password. Again, encrypt the password. 
where user ID is equal to the user ID that was provided, and then get the result of that query or trigger an error. And then we just have to come in here and make sure that the affected rows is equal to one, like we did before. And if it is, we're gonna create the body message for our email that we're gonna to send to them. And remember to put the single quotes inside of this. And then if I wanna mail this to the guy, of course I have to have my mail system set up, but I'm just gonna mail it to the email address they gave us. And there's your subject. And then in here I'm gonna put the body message. And then here I'm going to put from whatever the name of the site is. And just so we can see, I'm actually going to comment this out because I want you to be able to see it over here. But this is the way you would do it almost always. Remember, this is the tutorial, so it's going to be slightly different. And instead, what I'm going to do is print this out to the screen so that you can see exactly what we got here. And I'm going to put a break statement in here because I love break statements. And this is the message that's normally going to be displayed on a screen. Your password has been changed, but we're going to take the password off of that so that the only way they're going to be able to see the password is it's going to be emailed to them. And then we'll just leave everything else the way that we have it right there. And then since everything worked out fine, MySQL, close the database, exit out of the script. And people do not do this all the time. Echo, security answer is wrong. And if the security answer was wrong, we are going to close the database and exit out of the script. Because this keeps them from being able to continually keep trying things. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing that. And then I'm actually gonna copy this and paste it two more times. And that means I need to close off the submit conditional. And I'm just gonna do it just like that. And that's the end of your code. And if you can see here, if we would save this file, we got the guy over here. And the person's gonna, of course, have to know their user ID. And I think I remember what I typed in here, even though I do not know anybody named Goodwin. And then on top of that, they're gonna be able to read this caption, and it worked. Your password has been temporarily changed to, and you can see right here, this new password, which is just a jumbled up mess, please log in. This is what would be emailed to them, and this is what would be displayed on the screen. And that is it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Up next, I'm going to reintroduce and go through JavaScript and then bounce around and answer some of your PHP questions along the way. And whenever I think you are ready, then you will be prepared for cross-site scripting, which is extremely advanced security. And then we're gonna go into the inner workings of WordPress and you'll be able to do anything you could ever imagine with WordPress. Till next time.